Okay, good evening everyone and welcome to tonight's Board of Education meeting. The date is Tuesday, May 28, 2019. And I would appreciate if everyone would turn off their cell phones as this meeting is being filmed. Ellen, can you please do our roll call? Thank you. Thank you, Chairperson Granado. Good evening, everyone. Mr. Cassio? Present. Mrs. Evans? Here. Mrs. Fitzpatrick? Present. Mr. Healy? Here. Ms. McCurdy? Here. Mr. Morris? Here. Mrs. Paradise? Present. Vice Chairperson Mr. Hill? Here. Chairperson Mrs. Granado? Present. And Weathersfield High School Student Representative Ms. Eden Fritz Aguirre? All present. Okay, thank you. The board invites a group from the Webb School to come on up and lead this large audience in the Pledge of Allegiance. Come right up here. Thank you. You were great. I guess we're going to have you come up pretty soon. I look forward to it. Okay, Di. Um, Madam Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to amend the agenda for tonight. Second. Okay. Um, I move to amend the agenda to include the rescission of layoff notices for non-tenured teachers. Okay, a second? Okay, any discussion on this? Go ahead, Kevin. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, these were, uh, we're trying to give our teachers uh, in district as much notice as possible um, before they start looking elsewhere for jobs and to keep our teachers, um, uh, want to welcome them back next year. So the positions, uh, these non-tenured positions uh, will rescind uh, their renewals and the positions we're looking at for next year that we would lose would be to due to attrition or relocation so no layoffs would be happening that's wonderful news for all of us um, Diane and, and that's a <laughs> so the anticipated impact will be on we'll be losing eight positions Correct. We'll, we're going to try to obtain through um, attrition and the relocation. Right. So the we're board's still goal. Be staff. The board's goal has been to have small class sizes, and that's right up there with security. Okay. Any other discussion? All right. We'll take a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? So that motion is on the agenda. <laughs> All right. Um, Mr. Emmett. We have staff and our student recognition tonight. Yes, we do. Thank you, Mrs. Granado. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for being here tonight. Our first staff student recognition uh, will be from our friends from Webb Elementary School who are going to talk about plastic straws. Oh. Second grade's ocean saving mission, Mrs. Colacini and Mrs. Carlson's kids, well, Webb Elementary School. Do you know the very first plastic straw you or your grandma ever used is somewhere on this planet? Plastic straws never go away. Straws do not get, re straws do not get recycled. 
They are too small and, and too light to be separated in a recycling facility. They often go to landfills and end up in our waters and soils. Humans use 500 million straws every day. If you line up the straws, it would wrap around the earth four and a half times every day. Did you know this about Webb and straws? Webb uses an average of 122 straws every day. Imagine how many straws all of Weather's Field is using each day. about the same, look how long 122 straws is. It's about the same length as 35 second graders. Remember, Webb uses about 122 straws every single day. In one week, just our school uses about 610 straws. So why should we ban plastic straws? At the recycling center, plastic gets broken down into microplastics. Birds, animals, and fish eat this plastic because they think it's food. It stays in their bellies forever. It takes up room in their bellies that fish need to store food in. Out of one, out of one out of every four fish contains plastic. <laughs> this fish has plastic inside of it. In the year 2050, there will be more plastic in the oceans than fish. <gasps> what is Four Ocean? Four Ocean is a charity that sells bracelets to raise money. The money from each bracelet that they sell pays to remove one pound of trash from the ocean. They work in 27 countries to remove plastic and trash from our oceans. We've made these bracelets and sold them for one dollar each to students at our school. We raised 175 dollars and all the money we raised went directly to four ocean we were able to take eight pounds of trash and plastic out of the ocean those of you at our school know about this problem you went around to each classroom to teach students about plastic straws so are so harmful to our earth we even wrote opinion pieces to help convince everyone that we need to make a change. Here are some pictures of from our sales. What can weathers what can weathers feel do? Just say no to straws. We do not need plastic straws to drink. Kindergartens at, kindergartners at Webb have been using less straws since we started teaching about our oceans. They are doing a good job without them. We also saw three first graders with breakfast recently and all Three chose not to use a straw. Pre-K through K students need straws. We can buy paper straws just for those grade levels. We should stop ordering plastic straws immediate, immediately. So that we can help our sea life 
We only have one Earth. Thank you very much. Uh, to get up in front of a big audience like this takes a lot, and your confidence showed through. Nicely done. Anyone else with comments? Thank you. I learned something, too. Learned a lot. Diane? I think we should um, direct Chartwells to stop ordering plastic straws and go to paper, based on the information that these guys just gave us. Sounds like a great idea. <laughs> Well done, students. At this point in time, this is one of those events that uh, for me is bittersweet. Um, having been in the district now for 10 years, um, when we say farewell to our retirees, it's one of those things where you feel really happy for them and um, at the same time you're really sad to see their expertise leave the classroom. Um, this evening we are recognizing four out of our six retirees, and each of them has had such a profound impact on this district. If I could please have Miss Linda Alexander, music teacher at Highcrest, please come forward. <laughs> For the past eight years, Linda Alexander has served as the vocal music teacher at Highcrest School. Linda credits her success in developing the music program at Highcrest to the ongoing support and thoughtfulness of the Highcrest staff, students, and the community at large. While bittersweet, she's made the decision to retire this year in order to spend more time with her family. Linda said, my son Taylor and his wife Helen are professors at UNC Chapel Hill, and they just bought their first house. My younger son Colin will soon be in law school, and my husband Jamie retires from his firm in January, and the two of us will be able to spend time with my dad, now 89. As Linda has said, life is always filled with choices, and the choice to retire was not an easy one, but she's lucky to continue to work as a professional flutist and as a docent at the Wadsworth Athenaeum in her retirement. We wish Linda Alexander all the best. Congratulations. Thank you, Linda. May I please have Miss Jeanette Winarski oh. come up. Jeanette Winarski has been a fixture of sixth grade at Highcrest Elementary School since 1995. Previous to her position in sixth grade, Jeanette served as the special education teacher at both Emerson Williams and Highcrest Elementary Schools. Proud mother of Liz, Andrea, and Stephanie, Gigi to Sam, Mrs. Winarski, the godmother of Highcrest, has taught a variety of subject during, subjects during her tenure in sixth grade, including social studies, writing, and reading. Her classroom is filled with artifacts related to ancient Greece and Rome, and she was the master of ceremonies at the Greek Olympics. <laughs> Students enjoyed writing speeches, especially sixth grade parting speeches, which were delivered on our sixth grade step up. Mrs. Winarski also reads the latest novels and is a resource to her students when it comes to book choices. She loves challenging <laughs> her students to think deeply about important current issues. Many students who have graduated from Highcrest Elementary School come back to visit Mrs. Winarski. She always loves to hear how they're doing academically and socially and often asks about their families. Mrs. Winarski is someone who knows everyone. She has deep roots in the community of Wethersfield. And Jeanette is the ultimate grade level partner. She loves to collaborate and is always willing to try new lessons or strategies to engage students. She is optimistic about learning new curriculum and takes a positive approach towards student learning. Jeanette is always someone who takes the time to listen no matter what you need to discuss. Staff members often go to her for a compassionate, compassionate listening ear. 
Mrs. Winarski runs a student council program for sixth grade students. She's organized activities such as collecting toys at the Jingle Bell Run, Pink Out for Breast Cancer, Wear Red for Heart Disease, fundraisers and field trips to South Park Inn, as well as encouraging students to branch out and take the lead on new projects for charity, such as our current Crayola marker collection. Jeanette isn't only a role model for students, she is a role model for staff as well. She's been a team mentor for many new teachers at Highcrest and continues to be a valued resource to the entire staff. Her insight and experience makes her a walking wealth of knowledge, one that will be missed. Jeanette is one many turn to for the perfect wording when sending an email or writing report card comments. She's well respected by all, including parents of the Highcrest community. Jeanette has always valued helping others, both within and outside her classroom. She will always rearrange her schedule to have her students help the kindergartners and their teachers especially during the beginning of the year. Her perspective, instincts, and constant smile are so helpful to all students and staff at Highcrest School, and she possesses the most important trait you can have as a teacher, and that is kindness. Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Jeanette Winarski. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jeanette. Thank you very much. If I could please have Mr. John Campanello come forward. Hi. John Campanello will be retiring at the end of this school year, and he has spent the last 19 and a half years teaching physical education and health to the students at WHS. In addition, he has given 30 years to the football program where he served as head coach for the past 14 seasons after serving as, a, as an assistant coach for 16 years. As head coach, John compiled an 83-64 record and holds the most wins in the program's history. His teams won four CCC divisional titles and in 2014 led the Eagles to an undefeated regular season. In 2015, the WHS football team won the program's only playoff game, and in 2017, John and his coaching staff and team were presented with the Connecticut Officials Sportsmanship Award. In his tenure, John has seen nine players named to the CHSCA All-State Team and nine individuals honored as National Football Foundation Hall of Fame recipients. And John has also served as an assistant track coach for five seasons and a track official for over 10 years. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. John Campanello. Thank you, John. Now if I could have Ms. Tracy Shriver come forward. I have to admit, before I do the, the little biography here, I used to love going into Mrs. Shriver's kindergarten class, one of my favorite classes to visit. And it's hard to put into words the impact that Mrs. Shriver has made in many students' lives throughout her career. But with a little help from her friends and colleagues, here are just a few thoughts that they wanted to share. Since she was a little girl, she always knew she wanted to be an educator. Tracy began her teaching career in 1989 in the West Hartford Public Schools. Before she came to Wethersfield, she also worked in the Farmington Public Schools. In 2000, she was hired as a part-time kindergarten teacher in Wethersfield, allowing her to raise her two daughters alongside her husband, Matthew. After the Webb Kindergarten Center closed, Tracy moved on to Hanmer Elementary School, a place she's called home until her recent retirement. The town has been fortunate to have Tracy Shriver as she enriched so many young lives with her wisdom, patience, and timeless sense of humor every day. She was dubbed the Kindergarten Whisperer by her former principal, <laughs> Margaret Zakay. Over the last 30 years of teaching, Tracy has had many achievements. In addition to being described as a dedicated and passionate educator, she assisted with curriculum uh, writing for kindergarten, was a member of the Language Arts Committee, and worked on the Report Card Revisions Committee, just to highlight a few. Principals view Tracy as a source of great strength and stability. As such, some of the most challenging students were placed in her classroom. However, because of her perseverance and a little bit of grit, along with her unwavering commitment to students, every child would flourish. Tracy's classroom should have been labeled a Weathersfield landmark. Often, other educators from around the state would ask if they could observe her. They were seeking strategies to implement in their classrooms specifically to classroom management skills and teaching style. Of note, Weathersfield principals have also recommended that teachers observe her because of her unique approach and style of teaching. Where, uh, 
Tracy was able to integrate curricular content into every part of the school day. Tracy believed it was equally important to nurture and develop a child's mind while ensuring their emotional and individual needs were met. Here are some quotes uh, from additional colleagues who wanted to share. Curriculum specialist wrote, she has never lost instructional second, gracefully weaving teaching moments into every square inch of her day. Her teaching partner said, I've been working side by side with Tracy Shriver since 2012, and for that I am forever grateful. It has been the greatest learning experience I have had, and I have watched and learned from the best educator. Her patience and support have been endless, and her guidance priceless. She has taught me so much. For example, she demonstrated ways to intertwine literacy and math into every moment of the school day. I also learned how to manage a kindergarten classroom effectively. Words could never adequately express how fortunate I have been to share so many moments of laughter and friendship that have forever cemented countless memories working side by side with Mrs. Shriver. She truly enjoyed the wonderment and awe of kindergarten. One thing I know for certain is Ms. Shriver loved every and each student who entered her classroom. She showed empathy and compassion to her kindergarten families as well as anyone that entered room 23 where they instantly felt a sense of belonging. All I wanted to do when I first began my teaching career was soak in the incredible amount of knowledge she shared. Her ease and management were effortless, and this was reflected in her teaching. She had a gift, one that she shared, and one that will forever leave an impact on her students and colleagues of the Weathersfield Public Schools. She will always be referred to as the kindergarten whisperer, and I, as I continue out my career, I will implement her wisdom and strategies she taught me and will smile when I think of her. Another colleague stated, when I was first hired here at Hanmer School back in 2013, I had the absolute pleasure of working as a paraprofessional in Tracy's kindergarten classroom. I had just graduated from college and was dreaming to one day become a classroom teacher. The experience of being able to spend an entire year with Tracy was invaluable. I quickly saw why she had the reputation of being the kindergarten whisperer. There's a theme there. <laughs> The way she ran her classroom from the rules, the routines, her songs, how she spoke to the students, to that love they felt from, from her was everything that I aspired to be. I am now a third grade teacher here at Hanmer and I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my, of my heart for everything that you taught me. From our school social worker at Hanmer, Tracy's provided a caring, consistent, and culturally competent learning environment in her kindergarten classroom for many years. She has seen kindergarten evolve over the years and has changed flexibly with it. She has taught children how to care for themselves, one another, and their community while being sure to meet standards of the curriculum. It has been an honor to work alongside Tracy and witness her craft. And lastly, our reading consultant states, Tracy's knowledge with early literacy, math, the development of children is undeniable. She is an expert and leader in doing what is best for young children. She not only adjusts her curriculum expectations to fit her current students, but can motivate them to always try their best. Tracy's lessons are carefully planned, and she always has her students' best interest in mind. She is an advocate for their development and academic success. Tracy creates a school environment that is exciting, calm, and safe. Her students always come into school eager to learn and happy to please. She keeps her expectations high and her routines in place. Tracy has always loved her job of teaching children and did so with great passion, persistence, and kindness. Tracy Shriver will truly be missed at Hanmer School. Ladies and gentlemen, Tracy Shriver. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tracy. You, when, when you hear the accolades, you can realize why it is bittersweet. Um, you are just unable to replicate that level of expertise and experience. So. Um, I also want to mention we have two retirees who are not with us this evening. Uh, Suzanne uh, Kalazenko uh, was our cafeteria manager at Highcrest. Um, we wish her the best. And also Madame, Madame Trinkus from Weathersfield High School was unable to join us. If we could please give them each a round of applause. And congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. All right, next on tonight's agenda is the approval of the minutes for our regular Board of Ed meeting on May 14th, 2019. Do we have any corrections? 
All right, may I have a motion to approve these minutes? So moved. A second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Abstention. Those, ab did you get those two? Okay. Those minutes are approved. And also the approval of the minutes of our special board of ed meeting on May 21st, 2019. Are there any corrections? Okay, may I have a motion to approve those minutes? So moved. And then a second? Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Those minutes are also approved. Okay, is there anyone wishing to make a public comment? Come on up to the podium and may I remind you that you have a five minute limit. Please first state your name and address also. You know what I wanted to say too is the board does not comment after the comment, so it does look um, unusual, it feels unusual, just so that you know we cannot comment upon your comments. Thank you. I go? Okay. Um, Amy Carlson, 15 Terrywood. My name is Amy Carlson, and I am not only lucky enough to be a mom to two Wethersfield students, Ryan Carlson, who's in eighth grade at SDMS, and Sarah Carlson, who's in sixth grade at Highcrest, who've had two of our awesome retirees, um, but I'm also lucky enough to teach second grade at Webb, with as many of you saw, the greatest kids in the world. As absolutely nervous as I am, and you can tell, <laughs> about public speaking to people who are not seven years old, <laughs> I will be using my five minutes tonight to ask you not to eliminate a section of second grade from Webb, leaving just one teacher with 25 to 28 students in their classroom. Our second grader's beautiful presentation tonight was collaborated with my partner, <laughs> Catherine Colaccini. My great little partner and I have together taught an amazing class of kids every year. Yes, together. I know each and every one of her kids, and she knows each and every one of my kids. In fact, we call each other peanut butter and jelly, as we have developed a relationship that is based on careful collaboration, respect, trust, and friendship. This communication and collaboration at every level is actually a quote from the Board of Education's page as seen on the Wethersfield Public Schools website. As we have followed Weathersfield model, it has me thinking about one of us going alone next year without any collaboration, teamwork, ideas, support, town meetings, staff meetings, professional development, SLOs, field trips, that we would be on an island by ourselves. This statement would no longer be a truth in our grade at our school of web. Weathersfield has adapted a new leader leader model that has just begun to trickle into web at the end the web teachers roles towards the end of this school year. Although we are just in the beginning steps of this model, I am really hopeful here as I talk tonight to you about my students, why I believe that having just one second grade teacher with a class of 25 seven year olds and three ABA students, making that a grand total of 28 students, not including whatever new enrollments there most likely will be, a very lonely place to be next school year and all the years that follow this class. In fact, having such an enormous class size may be the best reason to have a partner. Perhaps you've had teachers at school before with just one section and one grade level, but I ask you, how did that go? How did that teacher feel? Did they feel supported? Did they feel included as part of something? Was that a success? The second grade will have a cascading effect year after year teacher after teacher who will not have an opportunity to collaborate with a grade level partner and professionally develop. Each year, this one large group of students will get the fractional attention that they deserve, not only due to an enormous class size, but to a teacher with now limited resources until their graduation from Webb. I say that assuming that if it's okay to collapse Webb in second grade, it will be collapsed each year thereafter. As a parent of children in the Wethersfield public school system, I am convinced that the student's lack of individualized learning will be irreparably damaged in these formative years. Second grade and all of the primary grades, quite honestly, need more attention, more love, more communication from their teacher to set the foundation for their success. I really understand the impossibility of the decision that you, of the situation you are in and having to make this decision. And I'm glad it's not me that has to make it. I feel strongly as an advocate to this grade that I must speak up 
for these little ones as they could not say it or know it for themselves. All they know currently in our smaller class sizes is they are secure, they are loved, they are learning, and they are happy to go to school each day. Their teacher knows their names, we know their family names, we know their pets' names, we know their likes, they, we know what they hate and what they don't like to eat, they know their learning styles, we know their IEPs, their 504s, their ELLs, their tiers of intervention. And I want you to know that there are teachers whose hearts are reaching out for you to consider all that is what in the best interest of our children and for our dedicated staff. No one wants to teach alone, no one wants to be alone. Students and teachers need to work together to best meet the needs of every person, whether they be students, staff, and families. We appreciate the many people who turned out tonight in support of us and all of us this evening. At this time, I would like to ask the teachers who came to support us, could you please stand? Thank you so much for coming. My name is Katherine Calaccini. I'm a second grade teacher at Webb also. <laughs> um, I want to start off by saying that I love teaching in Weathersfield. I choose to drive an hour each way from Fairfield every day because the Weatherfield community, especially my students, have become my family over the last four years. We've recently had the opportunity at Webb to start rolling out the Leader Leader initiative. And one of the big takeaways from our meeting with Lyle was that in order to create positive outcomes, you have to be willing to have hard conversations. I'm here tonight to have one of those hard conversations because it's being proposed that one of the two second grades at Webb should be cut, leaving just one second grade class, one teacher, essentially working on an island, no teammate, no opportunity for consistent collaboration. This will have an immediate impact on students. It's ironic that on the same night that you've witnessed how amazing the fruits of that collaboration can be with our Four Ocean project, I'm standing here before you asking, our not, asking you not to cut down our second grade team to one person. Before I get into that though, let me give you a little background on how this dynamic project came to be. It started with a five minute science video about plastic straws and how they harm our oceans and sea life. Our second graders were outraged. We were just beginning our opinion writing unit and I thought it would be great to have them try to convince our principal to remove plastic straws from web. When I shared this with my partner, she not only loved the idea but added that we should go even bigger, informing the entire student body about this issue. Eventually, we, along with our students, kept building on this idea together. The outcome was amazing. Second graders went to each classroom and spread awareness to the students of Webb. After this, we made bracelets with the help of our art teacher, sold them to students at Webb for $1 each, and raised $175 for Four Ocean, thus removing eight pounds of plastic and trash from our oceans. Our students made a global impact. Through this project, they learned advocacy, kindness, and compassion. They use skills like public speaking, counting money and making change, opinion writing strategies, and nonfiction reading and researching skills. They creatively strung together 175 bracelets from recycled magazine paper beads that they made themselves, along with donated beads, each with such care and attention to detail. They went home and absolutely refused to let any of their family members use plastic straws. <laughs> they were incredibly upset about the plastic spoons at field day. This is a project that cultivated so many skills in these children. They learned and practiced skills that go well beyond their report card indicator. They learned that their voice matters. None of this would have been possible without a team. If I had been alone in planning this, we would have had our principal read some of our opinion writing and that would have been the end. But look at what we were able to accomplish together. Building off of each other's ideas, growing our impact, engaging our students, and sending them off to third grade with lifelong skills. The board's own strategic plan highlights the need for coll teacher collaboration. Under goal one, action 8.3, it states, quote, provide opportunities for educators to collaborate with and coach one another toward making desired classroom improvements, improve their personal practice, and improve school and district programs in all content areas, end quote. It's best practice, plain and simple. Myself and my teammate do this on a daily basis and we have grown as educators as a direct result of this collaboration. In turn, this directly impacts our ability to provide the best possible education for our students. A teacher alone on an island is not nearly as effective as a teacher that is a part of a collaborative team. Leader Leader is something I fully support and believe in. 
I know that the, both the board and central office have worked closely with Lyle on this initiative. I do not believe that this budget proposal supports the leader-leader mindset. The people who have the largest impact on students were not asked or consulted for creative solutions to this $1.4 million cut. We're in the classroom every day with our students. We're, I can tell you so much not only about our second graders from this year, but students across the school and what they need to succeed, yet I wasn't asked what cuts make sense for students, nor were my colleagues who are equally as knowledgeable. It's disheartening and it's disappointing. On top of that, an administrative position worth $144,000 that will go unfilled next year is something central office is choosing to keep even though it would satisfy almost 15% of the necessary budget cuts. The director of curriculum and instruction position can be absorbed by the administration of our district. If we were able to cut this position in the 17-18 school year and still provide high quality instruction for our students, then we can do that again in a budget crisis for the 19-20 school year. It's been proven in past budget cuts that this position does not hold the same value as that of a classroom teacher, and it shouldn't. So now I'm asking you to do what's so ingrained in our profession. Reflect. Reflect on your own words and the strategic plan that you created. Reflect on the leader-leader initiative that you brought to our district. Reflect on the countless times that you've said to the Weathersfield community that students and teachers come first. On paper, the words for all three of these things showed a board of ed that is engaged, mentoring, and resourceful. But actions speak louder than words. If you choose to collapse the second grade at Webb, does that action support your words and ideas or our students? I don't believe it does. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Melissa Perry and I live at 18 Clove Hill. While my statement won't nearly be as eloquent as the second grade team I have the privilege of working with, I felt the need as a parent and as a staff member of the Web Weathersfield Public Schools to make a statement tonight. I am very concerned with the proposed budget cuts. I am most concerned about the increased class sizes and proposals to potentially collapse grade levels at several district schools. As the school social worker at Webb, I am upset to hear of the possibility of only one section in grade two or even grade six in our classrooms for next school year. It is hard to believe that our board could allow a teacher to work in isolation without a teammate supporting an extremely large classroom of young children. This cut will have a multi-year effect and cause the shuffling of teachers every school year until those cohorts move to the middle school. We all know that students learn best in small, supportive classrooms where they have the opportunity to connect with their classroom teacher. This task becomes increasingly difficult with large class sizes and poses a challenge specifically because of the significant developmental period these students are in. I urge the board to reconsider these budget cuts as they would be detrimental to our students and staff within the Weathersfield Public Schools. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, my name is Kathleen Brush. I live at 187 Fairlane Drive. I'm currently in eighth grade at Silas Dean Middle School, and I would like to talk a little bit about the importance of freshman sports at Weathersfield High. Most people probably think that kids want to play freshman sports just so that they can have fun and hang out with their friends. but. For many teenagers, playing sports is actu actually helps them to be successful in school in many different ways. Playing sports during school years has taught me how to budget my time and stay focused on my schoolwork. When I know that I have to get to practice, I get my homework done and I use my time wisely. When I'm not in the season, I find myself getting distracted at home with more free, free time. This brings me to my second point. Playing sports will also have help teenagers get off their phones and off the internet and away from video games. When we are playing sports, we use screens less and have more face-to-face -face time with our peers. We interact more with others and we make new friends and learn how to work together towards a common goal and solve problems along the way. Playing sports is also very important to a lot of students because it is often the only place where they can feel su successful. Getting good grades does not always come easily for everyone. Many kids struggle in school and do not feel good about themselves in the classroom. Being on the field gives those students a chance to excel in other ways. It builds their confidence and helps them to feel successful. 
All students deserve the chance to feel successful at something. Please do not take the opportunity away to play sports. Oh, please do not take the opportunity to play sports away from freshmen. Getting used to the high school can be hard enough. We deserve the opportunity to get to know people and interact with others and build confidence and feel accepted. Thank you. Um, hi, my name is Allie Leahy and I live at um, 110 Colonel Chester Drive. Um, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak tonight. I am 13 years old now and I am an incoming freshman at Weathersford High School. I'm here tonight to advocate for myself, my classmates, my and my teammates. I have played sports in Weathersfield since I was a young girl, starting at the recreation level, and now I'm finally on my way to be a student at the Weathersfield High School. I've envisioned myself playing sports here at Weathersfield High School, and, I've, and I finally have the opportunity to. Sports is a huge part of my life and so many incoming eighth graders. Sports is about so much more than actually playing on the fields or playing on the court or running on the track. Sports in, my, sports in my eyes is getting stronger, exercising, making new friends, having fun on a bus ride, or being invited to a pasta dinner. Being involved in sports helps young underclassmen, young underclassmen with time management, discipline, and feeling connected in a very small, in a very intimidating new environment. Thank you to the Board of Ed for giving me the opportunity to speak tonight for myself and for student athletes across the town of Weathersfield. Hi, <clears throat> excuse me. Hi, my name is Stacy Malanguaggio. I live at 275 Longview Drive, um, and I also have the honor of being a first grade teacher at Webb Elementary School. I came before I come before you this evening to share my concerns about the budget proposal to collapse the current first grade classes at Webb into one section of second grade. I know from personal experience the importance of having a grade level partner. With this proposal, the second grade teacher will be left alone. Who will they plan and collaborate with? Who will they get feedback from regarding students and data? Not to mention the many other things that teams do together, as you saw tonight, to make the year run smoothly for the betterment of all students. Next year, this one teacher will be required to roll out new phonics and science curriculum, as well as learn and administer new BAS assessments. Myself this year in first grade, we rolled out the new phonics units. My teammate and I work together tirelessly daily to collaborate, plan, teach, assess, and organize these new units. I cannot imagine having to do that work alone. I believe a single grade level teacher is not a successful teaching model, even for the strong seasoned teachers that we have in Wethersfield. Another concern that I have is that the one section of grade two would mean all incoming second graders would only have this one class to join. Webb is a fairly transient school, and therefore the likelihood of increased enrollment in an already high class size is a strong possibility, which would create a situation of having to open a new section at the last minute. And finally, I believe the board has expressed its desire for students and teachers to be the least impacted by budget cuts. So I urge the board to consider whether or not that highly paid position of supervisor of curriculum and instruction is valued more than effective teachers in classrooms, a teaching model that encourages collaboration and smaller class sizes. I know this is not an easy decision for you and I hope you can come to a resolution which will have the least amount of impact for our students. Thank you. Hi, good evening, my name is Michelle DePaula. I live at 20 Settler Circle and I have three kids in this Weathersfield um, education system. As a, resident of the town of Weather, as a resident of the town of Weathersfield and a parent of children who attend our school systems, I find the proposed cuts shocking. I am very upset the town council would approve a budget reduction in education, but to hear and see where the Board of Education is suggesting their cuts is a huge concern and outright disappointing. I recently reviewed the education budget and I suggest that we should be cutting administrative positions rather than the front lines of teachers and programs that directly impact our children. Weathersfield and Connecticut is hemorrhaging with residents selling their homes. Driving down any street, there are multiple homes for, with for sale signs. With the state already discouraging and forcing out residents, we do not need to be pushing out Weathersfield residents as well. We chose to move to Weathersfield purely for the education system. 
I know this will be a huge moving in or leaving factor for existing and future residents if the cuts continue to harm the one big draw to this town. I have a couple positions that I feel should be addressed and proven as a necessity to the town residents before cutting teachers, supplies, and sports programs. We currently have three assigned roles of assistant principals at Weathersfield High School. Excess secretaries, Silas Dean Middle, Middle School has three. There are 10 various secretaries within the Weathersfield High School system. There are seven high school guidance counselors. There are two and a half nurses on the payroll at high school. Seeing that nurse, seeing staff cannot provide routine treatment and just administer medications and uh, intercept, I would love to know what activity warrants two and a half nurses on the payroll. Social workers and psychologists, each school has one full-time social worker and one full-time so psychologist on their payroll. A full evaluation should be done on the necessity of these positions. Is full-time at each school really necessary or can we have one assigned to two schools? When speaking to fellow parents about access to these roles, a lot of times they've had to wait as there are limited openings or they're not always in the building, but these are paid as full-time positions. We have a special ed director and a special ed supervisors. Do we need these as two separate roles? We have two positions, one for IT supervisor and another for IT instructional supervisor that total over $200,000. Are these both necessary positions and can't be combined? Cut down the language programs. Pick two that are proven to be useful and essential in the students' business and career fields. Laptops, the support in IT needed to update and maintain these laptops are absurd. We spend a huge amount of taxpayer dollars on a wonderful library and computer center at the high school. Is this program really needed or can it be done as an as needed basis for students that need it? Cutting freshman sports and other sports such as lacrosse is upsetting. Lacrosse is one of the fastest growing sports programs in the United States and this one is on the chopping block. To cut a program that is so highly anticipated and supported when it hasn't even been given the opportunity to enter in the varsity program is so disappointing and premature. The high school already has 70 students participating at the high school, high school level club team. I believe that the high school should be given an opportunity to enter the varsity level. Next year is planned to be funded by the Board of Education and other sports programs. We also have a successful youth lacrosse program in this town that is growing each year and is in high demand. This season alone, we had 190 children participate from grades one through eight. Most of the grade levels could support two teams. With the popularity and amount of children, um, we're able to support the two teams. Every year, the participant in lacrosse is growing. Lacrosse Nationwide provides countless opportunities for scholarships, not to mention confidence and team building and health benefits. Again, we need to do an analysis on the interest level and demands of all sports before we take programs away from our students. Our soccer teams and baseball teams rank highly in states every year, and to cut freshman sports that provide skill building, teamwork, and morale lifting, how do you think that's gonna affect those performances later on down the line? The fact that the current Board of Education has not looked into these excessive administration programs first is unacceptable and a detriment to our students and teachers. Tutor, teachers and students involved with programs should not be on the chopping block. If that is the viewpoint of this administration, please let it be known so the residents can elect officials that better represent the heart and core of our residents. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Abigail Barrio. I'm a junior uh, in Weathersfield High School, and I've been a citizen of Weathersfield for as long as I can remember. <laughs> it has come to our attention that the Board of Education wishes to cut funding for lacrosse. I, as someone who has been part of this team since my freshman year, stand before you now not to yell or to vent but rather depict to you all just how important Weathersfield lacrosse is to the youth. This year has been extremely difficult for me. There were points where I didn't know if I could continue on, yet knowing that I still had my lacrosse team, it kept me going. I couldn't wait to be back on the field with my stick in my hand and the wind in my hair. If I'm being completely honest, lacrosse is the one thing that makes me truly happy. I can't express my immense gratitude for that in words. A couple weeks ago, I had a dream. It was about my lacrosse team and a pack of wolves. 
In the dream, we ran into a pack of wolves while being hunted by a group of mysterious people. The wolves were terrifying and towered above us, but for some reason, they were familiar. Most of the dream was murky and muddled, but there was one part I remember, even to this day. We somehow managed to get cornered by our attackers, yet right before they fired their weapons, the wolves came back and began to attack them. We were quick to join the fight, and soon we had taken those people down. When I awoke, I was mostly just confused. And yet, I had an epiphany later on that day. Those wolves weren't just wild animals. They were us. Beautiful, elegant, and above all, powerful. Together, we can overcome our obstacles. Together, we are triumphant. Together, we are wolves. Every game that we had, every practice, every time we worked together, we were our own pack. There will come a time when us girls each go our separate ways, whether it be this year, next year, or the year after that. But throughout it all, I will al we will always be together, both mentally and spiritually. These girls, these strangers who I barely knew at the beginning of the season, they've become my friends, my family, my pack. And I know that that seems like an odd thing to bring up, but through that dream, I realized just how much I love my teammates. And we all love the cross. Years from now, or just whenever we hit those low points where it feels as though nothing matters, we will look back and remember how it felt when we scored a goal, or when our goalie, Sousa, caught a ball and cleared it, and we brought it down the field. We'll remember how, despite everything, we were able to be a, the team with one of the best records in Weathersfield High School in 2019. 10 out of 11 games won, and we only lost to, to, to the state champions from last year. And for whatever hardships we face in the future, lacrosse proves that we will always, always have a family who will support each other no matter what, who will love you no matter what. We will, f we will never forget these days that we shared together because they are the things that make worth living. Lacrosse taught me how to be a fighter, how to be spectacular, how to be strong, how to be a wolf. And these wolves refuse to go down without a fight. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Nicole Silva. I'm from 15 Rosedale Street. I am currently the head coach for the high school girls lacrosse team, and I'm speaking uh, this evening in opposition to the proposed budget cuts, specifically those directly impacting student learning, <coughs> safety, and athletics. Our high school lacrosse program, consisting of almost 70 students, has been working hard over the past two seasons with the aspiration of becoming a varsity level program in the uh, spring of 2020. Given that the budget cuts are imminent, I urge you to consider, one, reallocating the existing approved budget for Weathersfield High School Athletics to include girls and boys across, or two, adjusting the pay to play across all sports to support our growing athletic department. I'm sure that most, if not all of you in this room, have been a part of a group, club, organization, or team that has impacted you as a young person. I'm not necessarily talking about a club or a team that you enjoyed being part of, but a specific time that was the start to a lifelong friendship or that teacher, director, coach, or mentor whose support and guidance changed your trajectory as a young person. I'm certainly not suggesting that I alone have the ability to change my players' lives, but while coaching, I always emphasize the importance of self-worth, confidence, trust, respect, and I strive to always support my players' social, emotional, and physical well-being. I can assure you that lacrosse is not just another sport for these girls. For many of my players, this is their only sport. For some, it's the only time they truly feel like they have an extended family. For others, it's their only physical outlet. And for a few, lacrosse is the one thing that they look forward to for most of their day. While many other towns are seeing a decline in their lacrosse numbers, Weathersfield is trending in the opposite direction. My girls ended their season this year with 10 wins and one loss, with the hope of be becoming a varsity program next year. 
I urge you to please find a way to fund this thriving program, a program that means so much to many of our student athletes. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, good evening. Uh, Kate Weingartner, I live at 31 Black Birch, and I'm a current parent, uh, web parent. I have a child in first grade and fourth grade. And I'm here tonight about the concern um, regarding budget cuts that are being discussed for next year for the 2019-2020 school year. It is my understanding that the Board of Ed needs to cut $1.4 million from the budget. I know this is not an easy task, and I appreciate the difficulties you will have when making your decision. One of them being proposed is to collapse the 2019-2020 second grade class at Webb to only one classroom. With the proposed elimination of one of the second grade classes, this would result in a 21, 29 to 1 ratio, student to teacher ratio. This is just unacceptable. Research studies have shown that children learn faster and perform better in smaller classrooms and environments. While I know that there are many variables to consider, the negative impact of a larger class size cannot be ignored. Physical space alone is a concern. With over th nearly 30 children in one classroom, barely enough room for desks, chairs, materials. And students will be less engaged. One teacher for an entire grade level leaves no room for professional collaboration or growth. Webb's current second grade team has worked together to expand upon the district's resources and collaborating to create innovative projects and events that complement the curriculum. None of these events would be possible or as dynamic with only one teacher fa to facilitate them. I implore you to find the money elsewhere. Cutting primary classroom teachers cannot be the answer. Perhaps it's time to look at making administrative cuts. There is a position at central office currently that is which will be unfilled next school year. We have gone without this position before, and with a price tag of $144,000, it is a significantly more effective and logical cut to the budget. Please keep in mind those that your decisions will directly impact. Also, cutting freshman sports and lacrosse is not the answer. Students need sports as an outlet so that they can succeed in the classroom. I thank you for your time and consideration tonight, and I pledge you to think of our students first. Thank you. Hi, my name is Kate Miller, and I too am here as a concerned web parent of three children, one of which will be in second grade next year. In addition to what has already been said, I would like to point out that Webb houses the district's only ABA program. Currently, our first grade classes integrate at least four additional students from this program, increasing overall class size to greater than 30 plus students. One teacher to manage 30 plus students with a large range of abilities will be next to impossible. I'm curious as to whether there is a plan in place to accomplish such a feat. I fear if there's no plan in place and classroom size is increased, our second graders will not be prepared to take and succeed on the heavily weighted SBAC test. Weathersfield presently draws young families due to its excellent education system. Moves to increase class size and make other similar careless decisions would jeopardize this. How will you incorporate new unregistered students? Increase to 31, 32, is there no cutoff? Surrounding towns have limits to teacher to student ratios and so should we. Our taxes are high, our class sizes should not be. You were chosen to do the right thing, please make it happen. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, members of the Board of Education. My name is Justin Riker, and I live on 396 Knott Street. Um, I'm here tonight to discuss the propo proposed cuts to the uh, freshman sports programs. Um, Kevin Hill knows this. Um, I was the Wethersfield High School football manager from 1996 to 1999, and then Coach Camp over there asked me to come back in 2010 to uh, be uh, to manage again as a football manager, and then um, I also got the opportunity, thanks to Coach Camp, to work alongside uh, coaches Forrest and Natal with the freshman program. Now. Um, I really don't think that the 
that the freshman football program should be affected because like because every day I see every day I saw them they gave everything they left everything on the field um, and like game day they left everything on the field now I truly hope in your heart of hearts that you would consider not cutting the freshman football program because when the freshman football program is over they have everlasting friendships with each other and their coaching staff and also their manager so i mean i really seriously hope that you take a good hard look at the cuts specifically to freshman football and please consider your cuts elsewhere. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Dan O'Connor. I live at 49 Broad Street. Uh, two things, first I will apologize for not taking off my hat. I do not mean to be disrespectful, but if you saw what my hair looked like, you'd probably think that was more disrespectful. <laughs> it's also pretty subliminal advertising. Um, as you can imagine, I'm here today to talk about Weathersfield Lacrosse. Um, take a trip back to about a year ago last year, the Weathersfield community showed a very strong force and came in here and lobbied for this board to introduce lacrosse into the high school. Pro, into the high school. And the board uh, was able to do that. And if you recall, at no time did the Weathersfield lacrosse community ask you for money. We asked you just to please get us in there. And then we went and we lobbied the council on your behalf. And I will tell you, if there's one thing I learned about the Weathersfield community when it comes to lacrosse is they're vocal and they're strong. And we went to numerous council meetings asking them to help you with your budget. I remember sitting in here and watching the DACA kids come up one after another. And every lacrosse parent that spoke said, find a way to help them too. And I guarantee none of them knew about the DACA program until that night. We are a very inclusive family. We tried to work together. We ask very little. And we have footed the bill this entire year when it came to lacrosse. This is the first time we have an opportunity to be a varsity program. It is one of the fastest growing sports in this town. It is the fastest growing sport in the country. Weathersfield was long overdue not to have a team. I think there's 169 towns in the state of Connecticut and only nine didn't have lacrosse and Weathersfield was one of them, no longer. Today I'm here to ask you on behalf of the lacrosse community is to find a way to get the varsity program in there. There is plenty of equity to go around when it comes to pay our share and the Weathersfield lacrosse parents have been paying the full boat, and now I would ask in return that the town find a way to make that happen. And I don't think you have to do it at the expense of a second grade teacher. I don't think it has to be a trade-off. I think where there's a will, there's a way, and the town always finds a way to do it. And again, if the town needs the lacrosse community to go to the council and advocate on your behalf, they will, but I will tell you this, this year they would like something in return and that is to make sure that lacrosse program goes varsity. It's long overdue. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Giovanna Ehrlich. I live at 12 Hunters Path, and I'm here to speak for two things. First, our second grade teachers are wonderful, and I don't know what either one of my daughters would do without having both of them there because they have done so much for her this year. As a teacher, teaming, PLC, data teams, co-planning, planning, you name it, it's with a partner or pairs or fours or fives. Education is not going to happen without having that cohort of people to draw ideas, to learn, to listen, and to perform on the education platform. And without that, without having that partner, without having that pair, web will not be as successful. And I piggyback on what they were saying about cohorts and taking a study and seeing the social emotional aspect of those children not having that individualized instruction and that connection with that teacher. I've seen it in classrooms before. I work in another school district and it's evident in these transition years as so young and picking up habits and 
we need to have two teachers at the very minimum in order for a successful classroom to happen and continued data trends moving towards success to build our education system here in town. Secondly, I'd like to speak on behalf of Weathersfield Youth Lacrosse and the High School Varsity Lacrosse program. I feel like it's deja vu all over again, standing here voicing and fighting for a movement that has continued to grow into a very successful program since it started in town four years ago. To hear the news of lacrosse losing all funding is extremely disappointing, especially because of the countless hours that has been spent by advocates, coaches, and players to make this program as successful as it has been in the short period of time. I just don't feel like it's kind of fair to necessarily punish a sport given the unfortunate financial situation that has been burdened onto the Board of Ed by the town. As an advocate for Weathersfield Youth Lacrosse and Vice President of the Youth Lacrosse Program here in town, I feel that we should move forward with it being a varsity sport and that pay to play should be adjusted across all sports, filling in any gaps that the overall sports budget may have for the 2019-2020 years. As Dan O'Connor had said, we don't ask for much. If anything, we support tremendous amounts and we will continue to support as much as we need. But all these kids out in this room, my daughter who's a second grader who loves the sport so much, who gets excited to come to watch these games, I ju we just don't understand. And it really would be a disappointment to see it not go to the level that has. And all these girls sitting in here have put so much time and effort knowing that it's going to that varsity level. And to see the effort and the time and the commitment that I've, they've put in over the past few years, it's just not fair. Thank you for letting me speak. Thank you. Hi, my name is Mike Lipka. I live on 51 Orchard Hill Drive. Just had a couple points I wanted to make tonight. Uh, there's been mention of a couple times about administrative positions, which I totally agree of that that has to be totally scrutinized. And the one position folks have talked about with the $144,000, that to me is a very easy, easy decision. Uh, another thing to consider is uh, in the governor's uh, budget, he is telling the talents they have to pay a portion of the teachers' pensions, which I think is absolutely ridiculous. That's a state obligation. It's always been a state obligation. And I know you guys can't control that, but I would push back and get our state representatives involved to have the state honor their commitments rather than pushing that cost. And my read of the budget was that was about $250,000. I did read in the Hartford Current this weekend. It looks like that may go away. Mm -hmm. uh, so hopefully that's another avenue for savings. Uh, I love all the athletes being here today. I do think if it got down to that point, you know, asking uh, people that can to pay a little bit is not uh, an, uh, the end of the world. I, I know it's not great, but uh, I think there's a, a good model with the Keene Foundation and others in this town where we support our activities, and I think people would step up that can to help that. And then finally, I've heard some rumors about the, the language programs and going from three to two. Uh, and French is close to my heart since my son's been taking French for five years now, and it's going to be a senior next year. And Madame is awesome, and I wish she was here to get recognized today. But just as you consider that, um, as I look at the amount of goods that the state of Connecticut um, uh, exports to countries, the number one country that we export is France, $3.2 billion in 2018. That's 18%, followed by Germany, 2.3, followed by Canada, 2 billion, which has a Quebec population. Uh, then the United Kingdom, 1.5, and Mexico, a little bit under a million dollars. So to me, it's a business uh, thing. If we're going to eliminate French, we're saying to our folks, we, we do not want to support the leading exports of our, our, of our state. And I know, especially working with some of you guys on the board here, that there's been a great emphasis this year to get, get the skills of the, uh, of the careers of people that are in, in the high schools, and I think that French goes a long way towards that, so thank you for listening to me. Thank you. Um, hi, my name is Mary Kay Jensen. I live at 23 Quail Hill. I'm a high crest mom, and um, I don't have anything written. I'm just listen to everything, and I feel really sad to hear our town residents pitted against each other. Um, students scared that they can't play lacrosse. That's their outlet. Uh, people, um, I've heard AP science, if you're a science kid and you don't have AP science and you wanna get into school, um, I never wanna hear second grade teachers crying, ever. 
And I promise you, if, if they get down to one, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lead 150 parents from every school. I'm not, Weathersfield, from, part, from uh, Highcrest to Webb to Emerson to Hamner, we're all coming. We are teaching our students to work in collaboration, to work together, to think on their feet. Um, it, they're not even using textbooks anymore. It's, it's all group work and collaboration. And to think that we're gonna have teachers work in isolation is completely opposite of the things we're teaching our grade school students and our high school students to do. So I promise you I'll be back here if that happens. Mark my words, I see you. <laughs> we have a lot of problems. I'm at um, Highcrest. We have, we're going to need a fourth teacher. I think that's known. Um, I don't know how you're going to do all this. I feel bad. I would never even volunteer to do what you do. I'd, I'd keep driving. <laughs> but I urge you to think of every possible way so that our drama kids aren't getting things cut. If you're a drama kid and that's your outlet, you're never going to play lacrosse. You're going to do drama. You need to be able to invest in that. If you're a science kid, you've got to be able to take your classes. I don't know how you're going to do it all, but there has to be something in administration that you can cut. It sounds like a lot of the web people have a pretty good idea. Um, we've got digital backpacks. I'm still getting flyers. We can cut money there. Um, I mean, I had a lot of ideas at some point, and now I don't. It's not, it's, that's not my job. I don't know. I don't know. But I don't know how we're going to find out. I don't know the process, What if there's transparency, are there special workshops. I I urge you to keep us abreast of that so more rumors don't get started, so that people aren't coming here panicked that their thing is going away. I got nothing. I'll, but I'll be back. Hi, I'm Tammy Judson at 114 Highland Street. Um, if you look around this room, I would say like 70% of the people here, maybe 90% of the people here, grew up in this town just like I did. And I used to call everybody prisoners of Weathersfield <laughs> because nobody left. Everybody stayed where they are. But lately, because I have five kids in the school system, five athletes, four of them that play lacrosse, and the only one that did not play lacrosse had to stop because we didn't have a program as a freshman. So she decided to do track instead. But she would have been a lacrosse player, debated on coming to lacrosse this year so she could at least say she was part of that founding group. But with five kids in this school system, over the past couple months of all this happening and the communication we've had amongst our high crest community in general and the community amongst all the athletes and parents and coaches is that I don't call, longer call it prisoners of Weathersfield. I call it proud of Weathersfield. If I pay the taxes I do on my house and every year I can beep, beep, I'll beep that one, <laughs> complain about what comes out of my taxes, I will say it's going towards my kids and their education, the town we grow up in. These kids have a foundation and for Webb, What's going to happen when they have a sub? Is that sub going to walk in and take 25 children? I'd walk out the door. I wouldn't be there. <laughs> and I have five kids. <laughs> so I feel for you guys. I can't imagine you're going to pull another teacher from somewhere else. I think in the sense of what we're looking at here is something. We have towns all around us doing more than what we do. We are a town that's worth a lot and wealth. We have parents that are sending kids to private schools, whether if it's their choice or they just don't want Weathersfield. Why? Because of situations like this or above and beyond that. What I ask is that we at least step up and show that we're proud to be part of Weathersfield. Stand by that. Show that this lacrosse community that we built is showing a better community. We have more family together now. These kids are staying out of trouble. We have people, we, we ship kids in from other towns to support things we give them something of an outlet, but we take that away, we're looking for trouble. And I think with the teens nowadays and the trouble that's happening and a little more of the craziness amongst kids, we have to have some outlet for these kids. And if it's drama, if it's a cross, whatever it is for your outlet, our town of all things should be supporting that. And if that's the case where there's an issue there, I bet every single parent would step up. And regarding fees for lacrosse, we paid $350 this year for high school lacrosse for sport, for eight weeks of our kids to play. Can some parents not afford that? They couldn't. Would any of us step up to pay for them? 
Of course we would. We do fundraisers if we could to do that, to get them to be able to play. So I just ask of you all to consider you being that proud of Weathersfield, that you can say you made it work for every single resident that lives here now to every single resident that grew up here just like ourselves. Thank you. Thank you. Probably all want to go home. Uh, Damon Pierce, 21 Chamberlain Road, and I'm here like everybody else because my family will be impacted by the proposed cuts, but uh, in the interest of full disclosure, I'm also in the business, 24 years in education, both in the classroom as a building level leader. And, uh, what, and, and so I've been in your position. I, in my current position, have to make painful cuts, and I will turn to my neighbors, and I will tell you there are times when we are going to have to stomach those painful cuts. I'm not convinced now is the time. And this may be challenging for you as an elected board to hear, and Superintendent Emmett, this may be challenging for you because of the position you sit in, but I don't have a lot of confidence in the fiscal leadership of this district. And I'm going to give you a couple of examples, immediate examples of why I, I come to that conclusion. Uh, the first one is uh, the budget that was presented this year, um, and I read about it in the press and, and in conversations with folks. Um, it, was, it, was, it was really touted as a reduction, right? You're down percentage to something or from, from last year. But in fact, if you consider the transfer of the custodial unit to the town side, the budget that the public schools put forward actually is still an increase over the previous year's operating budget. And so I recognize that contractual obligations make that happen, but there's a lack of transparency there that impacts my ability to think, hmm, are they really being straight up with me, the public? Um, there's also, um, and this is a delicate issue because I realize it might be personnel in, in nature, but there was an individual, perhaps an administrator, who made a poor choice the, it, from the optics of the public looked like he was transferred to a position that didn't previously exist in central office. And that's a big pill to swallow. Again, more scratching on are they being really transparent with us in terms of what are the priorities guiding them when they make fiscal decisions. And then finally, the list of proposed cuts that you presented us to, to today, or, or earlier, and that's why we're here, it, they, those cuts appear to lack an anchor in any kind of strategic direction. There wasn't any publicized, public, publication that went, so here's why we are making these painful cuts. Rather, they look to me willy-nilly. Um, they look to be perhaps low-hanging fruit that you could get um, very easily and perhaps with minimal public disturbance. Um, but I, as a taxpayer and as a parent, would really want to see what is guiding your decisions in making the cuts that you did. So I look forward to staying engaged in this process, listening to your meetings, and looking forward for news releases, any kind of publications you put up that can convince me and some of the folks that I speak to that, that what's guiding your difficult decisions is really anchored in a strategic priority and the best interests of students at heart. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Lauren Bonfiglio. Um, I live at 33 Old Post Road, and I am also um, a POW of Weathersfield. Um, I am writing this letter in support of freshman sports. Um, it has come to my attention that the Board of Education, Town Council, and Weathersfield personnel have recommended that freshman sports could be cut due to the significant budget deficit. This would be detrimental to our school system. To begin with, freshman sports is an excellent way to hook children early on and get them vested in school. By becoming part of a team allows children to feel accepted and comfortable in a setting that is new to them. Weathersfield is an extremely competitive sports town. If freshman sports were to be cut, many children would never be given the opportunity to play. A JV team would be difficult to make as a freshman and many students would be cut. If children are not selected to play for their first year of high school, the chances of them trying again the following year is considerably less likely. As a special education teacher here at Sosney Middle School, I work with a variety of students on a daily basis. These students come to school each day and every day ready and willing to learn. Not only do they work hard, but they have to apply themselves twice as hard as students without disabilities. Completing schoolwork, learning to read, or arithmetic takes persistence and motivation. They need to be determined to keep working when things don't come easy to them. After hearing the news that freshman teams could possibly be cut, I polled my students to see how many of them would be impacted. 21 out of my 25 students, which is 84%, plan on going on <coughs> to play a freshman uh, sport. The chances of these kids getting the opportunity to play without freshman teams will decrease greatly. For these kids, sports levels the playing field. 
They are given a chance to interact with their peers when not feeling that they are at a disadvantage. They don't have to acknowledge their disability and strategize ways to overcome it. They can be at ease on the field and be given a chance to show their strengths. Without freshman sports, these kids will suffer. In addition to being a teacher in town, I also have three children that are attending schools in Weathersfield. If you were to ask all three of my children if they like school, without hesitation, they would say no. Now I know that this is <laughs> typical amongst kids, but they would much rather be playing sports than reading books. My oldest is currently an eighth grader. She is about to begin her journey to the high school. <clears throat> Recently, she asked me if we could adjust our vacation schedule so she can participate in summer training in preparation for freshman soccer. Where mo many people think that this idea is crazy, I am happy to hear that she's motivated to practice. Although my child may not know it, she is already securing a future at our high school. She is being proactive and taking steps to join a sport that she enjoys playing. When she's hooked on the sport, she will begin to understand that in order to play, you need to perform in class to be eligible for the team. Before she even knows it, she's reading books and writing essays without complaint because she wants to participate on multiple sports teams. Also, she will feel connected to a group of girls with similar interests. She will have additional adults who are interested in her well-being and will be more apt to advocate for her if school gets tough. If she is not given this opportunity to play freshman sports, who knows what other interests she will develop outside of school. I know she's not alone. I know that there are many kids that are similar to my daughter and deserve to be given this chance to play for their high school. Please reconsider your decision to cut freshman sports. The repercussions of this decision will have a lasting impact on many of the children in this community. As a Weathersfield High School graduate, a current res resident of this town, a teacher, and a mother of three, I'm asking you to please consider all other options before you cut freshman sports. Thank you. Thank you. I'm St. Hilaire, I live on 40 Hawthorne Way. I'm Kelsey Perkins and I live at 22 Banbury Lane. And I was just here to come see my brother and his Four Ocean project. But when I heard about that they're um, joining classes in second grade, I thought that was just unacceptable. Because I know as a student at <coughs> Web that when we, when there's two separate classes, we work very well together. We become like a small family. And if we join, I just, I feel like some of the teachers are going away and also some of the students' relationships. Because I know Miss Colaccini from Dan's team and Miss Carlson was my teacher. And one of them leaving just, it's kind of like losing a friend, like a best friend. I play, I play Weatherfield lacrosse right now, and I look forward to playing it in high school. So if that's not an opportunity, I don't, I don't know. Um, I play basketball and lacrosse. I love sports, and I really hope that I can play it in high school. Great. Hi, good evening. My name is Jennifer St. Hilaire. I also live at 40 Hawthorne Way and the proud mother of Megan and my son, Christopher, who is a second grade teacher. And I feel I, I would be remiss if I didn't come up because my daughter has shown how brave she is in speaking in front of all these people. So I had the benefit of having both Amy and Catherine as teachers to my students, uh, to my kids, and they are amazing. And they are wonderful teens. And as you can see, they taught our children well with two fifth graders coming up and both of them having had them and advocating on behalf of them and my son and his wonderful second grade class learning about advocacy and learning and researching. It's been a wonderful experience for them and to see them grow is because of the classes and the way that they interact. I'm also, as I said, a mother of a rising sixth grader and I'm very concerned about the fact that you might be also con combining that team. These two have had a wonderful experience through Webb and to end their year, their time at Webb in one, it's just, it's unfathomable to us. The interaction that they have with the small groups, the ability to speak up, and contrary to what she just showed, she's actually a pretty quiet <laughs> little girl. <laughs> and so the fact that she's able to come up and stand and be strong is a testament to the web teachers. And so I would urge you to not 
cut primary teachers. They teach our children so much and they have helped prepare them to move on and the sixth graders to be in their last year at Webb and not have that same sort of environment to prepare them to go on to middle school is just unacceptable. So I urge you to reconsider the primary teacher cuts. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Paul Lissella and I live at 32 Hartford Ave in Wethersfield. Um, there is not much more I can say uh, given all of these people around uh, not impacting student learning, keeping our schools safe, as well as keeping our sports alive and specifically moving our lacrosse to a varsity sport. We do ask if there's a will, there's a way and we hope we've demonstrated a will tonight and uh, we look to you to help lead the way and as you're going down that path, I'd like you to think about even if the line item is eliminated from the budget that we have an equitable distribution of the existing sports budget to include lacrosse and that might mean that pay to play needs to increase for each of our athletes but at this point it simply must be equitable. As we mentioned, we have 70 high school students, we have 190 youth students. And that is our ask of you and my personal ask of you. As a father of five kids who are coming up through the system and eventually one in the high school now and uh, the four behind her. Um, I will anecdotally share a couple of um, stories. One, um, we have a family in town who chose not to send their kid to East Catholic because we were moving to a varsity sport. Um, those are the types of students and people we want to keep in our own school district. In addition, as the president of the youth lacrosse program, this year I have received four calls. Two were from corporate executives relocating to Hartford area for their jobs at the big insurance companies. They were in fact questioning um, do we have a youth lacrosse program, what's mm -hmm. it like, and do we have a varsity lacrosse program in high school? And I did tell them, and you can't make me look bad, that it would be there next <laughs> year. <laughs> and, uh, and then two other families, one moving up from Fairfield County, uh, was at Gianna's game the other night, and then a single mom trying to look for more affordable housing and getting out of Avon. Um, all looking for not only a good education system, but also looking for a strong and robust athletic uh, competency in the town, including lacrosse. Trust me, those are the people you want moving into town because they're gonna buy the houses, they're not gonna quip with you guys when we're increasing taxes by $72 this year and $84 that year. Um, but, in, and lastly, I will say this uh, slash and burn approach is not acceptable, not for our town <laughs> council, not for our board of education and our tax and spend options are also unacceptable. We have to find a long-term sust sustainable way to raise money, to keep our revenue stream high, to keep our expenses low, and to keep positions that drive our student learning, as well as our athletics and our school security to the top of the list. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Michelle Bozzano, and I live at 34 Fox Hill Road. Um, I moved to Wethersfield nine years ago now, and I grew up on Long Island. I lived in New York City for a long time, but um, and I saw my sister as a city teacher struggle with large class sizes. I personally went to a private school. My mom um, and sent me on her teacher salary, me and my sister, to private school and Catholic school my whole life. So I um, flourished in small classroom sizes and I got to play, um, I got to be in drama, which is what I love to do, and music and chorus. And um, I also um, played varsity lacrosse for one year. I was not very good, I don't know why I made the team, but um, <laughs> it was in the 90s and I can't believe that it's a new sport here. It's huge on Long Island. Um, I have three children. Um, my daughter will be um, attending um, Highcrest as a kindergartner for the first time. So from someone from out of town, um, you know, not from here, I've, I heard of these budget cuts, uh, or like the teachers, and it, 
saddens me as my mom and sister are teachers. I know how hard teachers work and how important it is to their stu to students that um, I would implore you to make cuts somewhere else. And again, none of my kids are yet in the school system. And it's not out of the question to me to move. Um, I've been looking in neighboring towns. And I also have been looking into private schools because that was my upbringing. But honestly, I was excited because when I first moved to Weathersfield nine years ago, all I heard about from when I moved here from the city was, oh, Weathersfield, great school system, great school system. And I hadn't even had kids yet. And I was like, oh, cool. And now, you know, here I am fight, thinking of, oh my gosh, is my daughter going to be in kindergarten with 27 kids and one teacher? And my daughter's outgoing, but it still scares me. Like, can she learn in that environment? So I obviously am, would really want a fourth teacher at Highcrest. But I've heard that they're, you know, old buildings and, and that I've heard of band practices and closets. Like, you know, this just seems unacceptable to me. And it's scary to a young family um, in town. I also brought my neighbor here today who also has young kids not yet in the school system. And um, it's just really disappointing to us to think of cutting the, those primary teachers. So please, I implore you again to think of cuts elsewhere and, and also to please keep the freshman sports, because that's something that's so important to, to kids, and especially at that um, age group of, you know, finding yourself and going through puberty and all that. Like, you need to, like, have an outlet, and sports is really um, crucial to that. So thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Ryan Carlson. I live at 15 Terrywood. And I promise it won't be five minutes, because I know that's the cutoff. Um, I kind of have my foot in both both doors here. Um, going into high school as a freshman next year, my mom's Amy Carlson, a second grade teacher. And um, I'm pretty bad at public speaking as well, so I don't know what I'm doing up here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think it's unnecessary to make budget cuts in either of those departments because sports have molded my childhood um, into something that I've loved. And um, I have so many memories, and I think it's vital to not cut freshman sports because it continues um, helping teens cope with emotions and make friends. And I think it's also important not to cut um, teachers because a 28 student classroom plus maybe more with incoming students from different towns and states or wherever they're coming from would be too much pressure on one teacher. I, I already have seen the pressure that my mom faces every year just with the amount of students she has. I don't know, I think it's just I think you probably find something somewhere else. And I know it's not easy for you with all these people coming up trying to argue against you, but I think it's important for you to try to find somewhere else in the budget to cut something. That's it. Thank you. My name is Leah Ellis. And my name is Lily Hanna. And we don't want our teachers to go off, go and get another job. And we want our teachers to stay at us until we graduate from middle school to another school. And we don't want to see them grow. So can you please find something else? I have laryngitis, so this is going to be very quick. Um, my name's Michelle Musello. I live at 100 Meadowview Drive. Um, I took the lead as the coach of the girls lacrosse four years ago. Um, I taught them all that they needed to know and to be successful in high school. I've been with these girls. I had four lacrosse teams this year. I have three children, uh, one sophomore who's at the high school, a sixth grader and a seventh grader. And my fourth lacrosse team is my freshman girls team. That is, a, these, I've been with these girls through the years. They're dedicated, they're, talent, they're talented, and they're an awesome group of players. They um, had an awesome season. We had some rough competition. We played Glastonbury. We won 9-7. We played Simsbury as a freshman, very established program. Um, 
one tie, one win, seven three. Um, Connard, I graduated from Connard High School. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not one of you. <laughs> we did lose to Connard. Um, it was a four five. It was a really good game, but we came back and won eleven five. Uh, we played Southington thirteen two. Um, our season record was seven. Four and one for all my all freshman girls lacrosse. So they this year, obviously, going forward, to have a CIAC program would be fantastic. And we have winning seasons. Our girls had winning seasons and our boys had winning seasons and they are dedicated and I I hope that you can find in the budget the lacrosse and to keep my teachers. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Emmett, you have some communication to share? I do, thank you and good evening. Uh, everyone, thank you for being here. And uh, you all have your phones? So get out your calendar on your phone, April 20th of 2020, Monday, April 20th of 2020, seven o'clock right here in town council chambers. We need your support for the budget so that we do not continue to face these difficult cuts. They're hitting us hard and you know, every one of you that came up here tonight and talked spoke from the heart, you spoke eloquently, and you align directly, whether it be with our strategic plan, whether it be how much your teacher means to you, whether it be the lacrosse team. I can remember a couple of years ago meeting with a group of uh, dads in my uh, conference room talking about how to get lacrosse off the ground. Every one of these reductions hurts. And the issue that you have is where do you make these tough cuts? We've talked about the administrative cut we are down an administrator at central office. We are down 2.3 secretaries across the district over the past two years. The hard part here over the past three years are with ECS reductions and budget reductions, we are operating extraordinarily lean. And the reality here is we may need to make difficult decisions. This board of education did not reduce the superintendent's proposed budget by one dime. And it went to town council and town council saw fit to make the reduction. I can certainly understand, you know what your taxes are and you see what the mill rate is. We understand why. We also understand that we have the potential with the teacher's retirement funding falling upon the board of education. It currently is in our budget to the tune of just shy of 250,000. Right now, we're not sure if the uh, state is going to take that out. We're holding it as it's in. In the event that that is not part of the state budget, we'll look to take that money to apply it to um, reduce the cuts that we have to make this year. This is an extraordinarily difficult time. There's a lot of rumor, there's a lot of innuendo, and everything unfortunately goes on the table when you're looking at these difficult cuts. And what we're trying to do here this evening is to rescind the non-renewal so that we can at least bring our non-tenured teachers back. And we're trying to make these reductions where we do it through attrition as opposed to losing bodies and paying unemployment. For every four teachers we lay off, we have to lay off a fifth to cover the unemployment. That's, that's the reality here. We also look at, and what I saw tonight with the web students, and what I, I saw math, I saw science, I saw confidence. Mr. Carlson, your speaking, public speaking is just fine. No worries there. And again, having gone to lacrosse uh, matches and to see what we have with our sports across the town, Again, all of our um, extracurricular activities as well. This town is wonderful for its school system. We have a lot of wonderful students and we have the best staff. I say that unequivocally. We also face the reality of having to come up with very difficult cuts. We talked about having the least impact on students. No matter what we cut, in some way, shape, or form, it does impact students. In talking, I sent out an email to staff on Friday and asked for, for feedback. And I had the opportunity to speak with a couple of teachers who were here this evening to talk about the potential reductions. And it is one of those things where 
everybody comes to the table with something and it impacts people in different ways. So this board is taking on the unenviable task of coming up with a reduction that totals just over a million dollars all told. We did enter into the shared services agreement. We no longer have custodial and maintenance. We no longer carry the, uh, the um, utilities for next year either. Those were typically areas where we would look to make reductions and we don't have that luxury anymore. In, addi in addition to that, we typically will reduce our supplies. We've already hit that this year. And we have the wild card with special education. Um, and I, I think the other piece too in moving forward, I think it's incumbent upon us from me sitting right here before you to all of these board members to make sure that we get the word out about the budget. Gone should be the days if we go and we have a budget workshop and nobody shows up or one person shows up. Gone are the days where we make these cuts without people being heard. We need you in the audience. When we had the town-wide budget hearing this past April, we had a total of, I want to say, seven people who spoke. That's it. Not one person got up and spoke in favor of the education budget. And perhaps we've become a little complacent because we've been able to do more with less for so long. But that time has come to an end. So we'll continue to have the, the, the deliberations. We'll talk further with the board um, around where we need to be and what we need to do. But I can tell you, I know I speak for every one of the board members up on this dais, this is not an easy task. And this cuts to the core of what we're all about. To hear teachers talk about leader, leader. To hear teachers talk about the strategic plan. Remember we talked about it being on the shelf? Not anymore, it's not. It's part of what we do. It's how we operate. So we still have more work to do. Um, some other communications this evening, just to let you know, the train startup, yes, it is official. The train startup will take place uh, on June 3rd. The stop signs and yield signs are up. Uh, please make sure you remind your kids, especially those of you with kids at Silas Dean Middle School who walk, remember to be alert for trains starting up on June 3rd. Uh, tomorrow, we'll be meeting with representatives from Malone and McBroom and Colliers. We'll be meeting tomorrow to uh, talk about an update on the progress for phase two. Someone in the audience this evening talked about our old and worn out buildings and music in the closet. And we've worked all year long on coming up with a long range plan to address these buildings. You're looking at a cost of over $33 million to repair what we currently have in our five elementary schools. We need to start looking to the long range. Right now we're at the peak of our debt service with Weathersfield High School. So that's starting to decrease over the next 10 years. So it's time to look at the future of the Weathersfield Public Schools and make sure we're giving our kids state-of-the-art facilities. So I will need you front and center for that as we move forward on that endeavor. Some other items coming up, uh, Dollars for Scholars. Uh, the annual Dollars for Scholars Award uh, ceremony takes place tomorrow evening at 7.30 at the Community Center. Um, I am very proud and honored uh, to be giving out the first uh, Keith Raffanello Memorial Scholarship uh, Keith Raffanello, our Director of Technology, tragically passed away back in September, and this will be our first opportunity to uh, honor him. Uh, DARE graduations and step-up ceremonies are fast approaching. Please check your calendars for specific dates and times. I will be attending the Web DARE graduation prior to Dollars for Scholars tomorrow evening. And then last but not least, we have uh, Weathersfield graduation for Friday, June 14th at 6 p.m. We are only a few days away from being in the window of the long range weather forecast, so we will be taking a close look. Hopefully we'll be outside in the cove where we belong. And with that, that's communications. Thank you. Any comments? Any questions for Ms. Tremmett? Okay, thank you. We'll move on to our four action items this evening. Um, for our, our recommended motion 6A, John Morris, would you read that for us? Where are you, John? I'm over here. Nine, nine, move that the Weatherfield Board of Education approve an unpaid leave of absence for employee ID 904467. This request is a one-year unpaid leave beginning August 26, 2019 and extending through the 2019-2020 school year. Okay. Is there a second? Second. All right. Any discussion? Michael. Yes, this is a uh, member of the Weathersfield Federation of Teachers that uh, wishes to pursue a graduate degree. I'm um, in full support of this leave. Um, this provides us with a little bit of flexibility um, and allows us to take one of our existing staff members and move them into that position for next year and avoid a layoff. <laughs> Do you have anything else? Any other discussion? All right, we'll take a vote. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? 
Any abstentions? Motion 6A passes. 6B, John Cassio, would you read that for us? Move that the Weathersfield Board of Education approve the 2019-2020 school year calendar as recommended by the calendar committee. Okay, can I have a second? Second. All right, any discussion? Go I ahead. had the uh, privilege of serving on the calendar committee this year, and uh, what we've done with next year's calendar is to look at uh, interjecting some professional development time and early release days for um, our teaching staff. With the additional 15 minutes of instructional time next year, this gives us the flexibility. At the uh, secondary level, this will allow the high school uh, and middle school to work collaboratively. In addition to that, at the high school, we are actually beginning our self-study for our NEASC accreditation, which is coming up in the next couple years. Great. Anyone else? All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Good. Motion 6B passes. Motion 6C. Chris? Uh, move the recommendations. Uh, do I have the background? Got a motion approval of the. Uh, sorry, recommend a motion to approve the 2020-2021 school year calendar. Okay. Can I have a second? Second. Okay. Any discussion on this, Michael? Yes. This uh, calendar um, has been developed by the calendar committee. Uh, we try and develop our calendars two years out for planning purposes for parents and for staff uh, to plan out for vacations. So. Uh, this is just keeping in our uh, our consistent pattern. Anyone else? Okay, so we'll vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Motion 6C passes. And John Morris, would you read motion 6D, which we added this evening? As soon as I find it. Uh, move that the board rescind the non-renewal notification of the following non-tenure teachers. Mm -hmm. um, contract IDs 906445, 906104, 906443, 906094, 906451, 906352, 906093, 906335, 906364, 905564, 906126, 906419, 906185, 906357, 906421, 905908, 906448, 905832, 906496, 906470, 906183, 906196, 906427, 905444, 906084, 906166, 906180, 906171, 906016, 906086, 906188, 903157, 906186, 904688, 906362, 906481, 906453, 906433, 906406, 906156, 906100, 906452, 906366, 906361, 906360, 906359, 906446, 906083, 906420, 905, 969, and 906182. Okay. Is second. there a second? Okay. Second. Any discussion? Please don't make me repeat it. I know when you don't have to repeat it. <laughs> All right. Any discussion, Michael? As you made it back in time on our. Okay. So we'll take a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Motion 6D passes. I'm very pleased. Okay. Um, our board of meetings held. We had the CREC Council. Ginger? Well, I uh, have to say I unfortunately did not make it to that meeting. Um, they were scheduled to have their annual meeting and to approve their budget. Um, they are continuing to monitor House Bill 7109, 
which is to increase uh, magnet school funding, which is still, um, at least according to the website, and perhaps Mr. Hill can give us uh, confirmation, is still winding its way through the legislature. Um, but unfortunately, I had a, uh, a family emergency, so I did not make it to that meeting. Well, thank you. Okay, and we had Human Resource and Personnel Committee meeting. Elaine, will you speak to that? Um, yes, at the Human Resource Committee <coughs> meeting, we um, discussed exit interviews. We are in, in the process of trying to gather data to understand why people want to or can't, are leaving Wethersfield prior to the retirement date. Um, is there a reason? We're trying to gather data to see what we are doing good and what we are not doing good. Um, and um, we don't have enough information um, for the end of this school year. Um, Alexa in the Human Resource Office is meeting with people who are leaving, but not just for retirements, as I said, or relocations, but sh and she's trying to gather data, but there are not enough data to make any conclusions for this year. But Alexa will try to gather more data next year so we can make some helpful conclusions. Um, school um, climate or whatever is <coughs> making people leave for the district. Um, we also discussed that the human resource, um, off, uh, Mr. Trent Donahue spoke to the volume of the extended leaves of absences and the HR team has managed this school year to do well with that. But um, we have a lot of absences at this time of year due to college graduations and it's a wedding time of year and Filling all those positions is hard too for substitutes. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Elaine. Um, and then we have Kelly. Will you speak to our special board of ed meeting on May twenty first? <laughs> sure. Um, on May twenty first, the board got together with several other. Um, what's the word I'm looking at? The superintendent, the business manager, human resources, and several other people in the district, and we started to talk about the $1.4 million cut that the town council had handed down to us. And within that meeting was very lengthy, let's say three hours, maybe yes. a little bit more. Um, we started to go through the process and we went line by line through the budget, trying to understand exactly all the pieces of it and then start proposing different areas we could possibly make reductions. Um, and that was our first pass. Okay, anybody to comment on that? All right, thank you, Kelly. And our meeting we just had this evening, Finance and Information Management Committee, Kevin. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, for this fiscal year, uh, Mr. Gazaka noted that we are still $80,000 under budget with the same budget drivers as previous months. Uh, we did speak about how to handle the non-renewal notices uh, today. We wanna give the teachers as much time to let them know uh, ahead of time that do not look elsewhere, we want you back in district. Uh, and we were prepped more for Thursday's special budget uh, board of ed meeting where we uh, taking under all these um, ideas that came out tonight under consideration. Okay, thank you. All right, we do have a meeting scheduled. We have WEC, which is Weathersfield Early Childhood Collaborative, which will be on June 10th, 2019 at 4.30. Is there any unfinished business? On the board, okay. So we'll move on. Is there anyone wishing to make a public comment? Come on up to the podium and state your name and address. And may I remind you that you have a five minute limit. Uh, my name is Brian Healy. Again, lifelong resident from the town of Weathersfield. Uh, you probably remember me here from last board meeting. Uh, last thing I wanted to do was come back up here tonight, um, especially with teacher cuts, lacrosse cuts, and all the other concerning things. Um, but I did want to uh, speak on the decision of the board then of keeping status quo with the hockey program. Um, one of the board members was nice enough to give me a call and try to explain how they came out to this outcome after <coughs> everything they heard and read. She did tell me that she could not comment specifically on any personal personnel matter, but my interpretation of the, of the conversation was there was nothing that he could be done because the administrator had already signed off on the coach's evaluation. The board, is, the board of Ed is elected to manage 
to oversee and manage school personnel and affairs. To me, if the Board of Ed sees something wrong, they should fix it, whether they got to review the process was done or not. That being said, I did go to Mr. Moore in April, telling him that we were willing to go to the board with our concerns. He told me to let the process play its way out. He made me feel, never said that there was going to be change, made me feel like there was going to be some change in the evaluation. He had no intention of making any change. He just played me until the evaluation was over. If the CIAC job doesn't work out, I'm sure he'll make a good politician. Mr. Emmett was nice enough to call my wife about the decision. Somewhere in a conversation, Mr. Emmett stated that we can't get rid of a coach because parents don't like them. We'd have no coaches. We came to the last board meeting with concerns, bullying, favoritism, abuse. If you didn't see it, you can rewatch it. It was nothing to do with liking or disliking someone. The facts are the facts. Because the administration didn't put them in the coach's evaluation doesn't mean that they didn't happen. Mr. Vonick, who spoke, to the, spoke at the last board meeting, said and told the administration of his concerns with the team. Did those make it into the coach's evaluation? Did parents' emails make it into the coach's evaluation folder? We're at the mercy of the administration on whether they did or didn't. I was an assistant coach here at Weathersfield for 20 plus years. I played here in Weathersfield. I want to make sure everyone is well aware I have no intention of coaching any high school hockey program in Weathersfield or in Connecticut. In the game in Enfield, when I was an assistant coach, in the handshake line, an Enfield player spit in one of our players' faces. I told their coach about it, and his response, his response was like it was no big deal. I didn't like the way he responded, and I'm sure I used some profane language in getting my point across to him. Mr. Moore suspended me for coaching for one game, no, and I'm sure he noted it in my file. I think what happened to the player in Middletown was a lot worse than me swearing at another coach, and I don't think I put the town in jeopardy of being sued. At the end of the board meeting, one of the members said, sounds a lot like girls' soccer program, and everyone knows what happened to her. Another member said there should be a private investigation. Talk to the kids. Emails from the board an email from the board said the administration did an investigation. Who do they talk to? Did they talk to the kids? I'm still waiting for Mr. Moore to call me back from three weeks ago, so I'm sure he didn't talk to me. Like Mr. Cassio said, the administration continues to sweep things under the rug. Not only did I get played by Mr. Moore, but it seems like the board got played too. But I'm an, op I'm an optimist, and I believe that someone will step up and put a stop to this. As we wait for that to happen, I hope the board can at least look into the 5 a.m. practices. The Weathersfield kids get up at 4.15 a.m. to be in Newington on time. There is an email all about the negatives of high school students getting up early. I hope the board revisits that email. The only benefit of practices, the only, the only benefits of a.m. practices is that it's cheaper on cost and you get an extra ice, you get an extra 30 minutes of ice. The extra 30 minutes of ice is useless because the kids are asleep, and by the time they wake up, it's time to get off the ice and go to school. As for the cost, parents understand ice time is not cheap, and they would be willing to pay extra for afternoon ice. Hopefully, the board can revisit this before the administration sets this in stone, too. I strongly recommend and hope that the board will make some sort of comment about what the hockey parents and program came up with last week even if it is just swept under the rug. Thank you, and sorry to the teachers and no. other people that I had to bring this back up. Thank you. Okay, anyone else for comment? Okay, so move on. Are there any board comments? Ginger? I just want to thank all the parents and kids, especially the kids who came up and spoke tonight. Um, it's all information is good information. And I think that um, while most of the things that were said have already been thought of, as well as uh, there's some line items that did not have an advocate here tonight. And those line items need to be looked at also. Um, but we thank you for coming. We thank you for speaking. Um, Mr. Emmett told you to put a date in your phone. I'm going to tell you to put a website in your phone. 
Wethersfield Board of Education has every meeting, every agenda, every set of minutes. Read it, that's what it's there for. Please, come talk to us, come tell us what we're doing right, come tell us what we're doing wrong. Thank you. Thank you, Ginger. John? Thank you, Bobby. Um, just wanted to uh, thank everyone who participated in this last Memorial Day parade. The weather was great, uh, the marchers enjoyed themselves, but more importantly, we had two eighth grade students who came forward and took on the challenge to write an essay about what Memorial Day means to them. Um, their essays is on the website of the Weathersfield Parks and Rec. Uh, I urge you to check that out and Thank hopefully you. we can also get them on the website for the Weathersfield Public Schools. Those two young ladies are from the eighth grade, Izzy Barubi and Annie Hart. Both did a phenomenal job. Um, the other thing that was notable this year was the participation at the Village Cemetery. Um, that's where we as a community come together and pay homage and thank those individuals who took the cost, their cost to save uh, our, our uh, community as well. Um, we had the uh, theme of honoring the Gold Star and Blue Star families as well, coming off of the uh, Silas D. Middle School Assembly where a mom came forward and spoke. Very emotional, uh, very telling, and it's hard to believe that you know the children that are talking have no idea uh, what was World War II or the Vietnam War, and, but they're seeing a lot of anguish in the community and the country now, and the engagement of what's going on. So I thank all that participated. Our keynote speaker was Mark Granado, and he. Uh, really took it home uh, with a star in the window. And um, the singers, the band, it was a community event. But I also want to thank everyone for that. And thank the second graders at Webb for the phenomenal job what they did today and their uh, demonstration about straws. And um, I encourage the board to move forward and talk to Chartwells about no more plastic straws. Maybe that can save us some money in the budget. <laughs> and uh, thank everyone for coming forward and being a part of the um, process. Um, it's never too late to speak up and to be a part of your community. Yeah, You're there now and continue the hard work moving it forward. Thank you. Okay, Diane. Um, I did, don't know if anyone saw this on the Channel 61 News the other night, but um, two of our recent Weathersfield High School graduates, um, Josh Machado, um, class of 2016, and Tristan Banks, class of 2015, last night reached the top of Mount Kilimanjaro. Mm -hmm. um, they were part of a program at UConn, a challenge where both of them raised over $10,000 for Make-A-Wish Foundation, Connecticut. Um, and they left last week, and last night they reached the top and are probably on their way down now. Great, that's wow. wonderful. What an experience that must be. Chris. Uh, thank you. Uh, also, a great Memorial Day parade, and thanks to John for all the work he does on it. Um, there's another event coming up next week, and um, I saw something on Facebook that um, was kind of cute, but uh, rem reminded me that it showed one of those memes that says, <clears throat> your day at the beach was paid for by these men's day at the beach. And it showed the landing crafts at Normandy uh, almost 75 years ago at the greatest land sea invasion in the history of civilization, which liberated a continent from fascism. And it's probably one of the greatest moments in humankind of the liberation of enslaved people, and I know the day of D-Day, there'll be a ceremony at the high school. I would urge anyone um, in the audience or listening to avail themselves to that if they can make it. If nothing else, uh, take a time to learn a little bit about that special day and the sacrifices made by people to free a continent and to allow us to do what we do here every day. And we sometimes <coughs> take for granted, but the Amazing heroism. There are many books written about it. Um, there are many television specials if you don't want to read. 
uh, and I saw one story of a 95-year-old paratrooper who jumped out of a plane in Normandy for 75 years ago, and he's going to jump out of the plane again. Which shows you he didn't learn anything the first time around. <laughs> but it's just a, a, a telling reminder of what makes Americans exceptional and our country exceptional. I just hope that some people take the time to remember that and participate in it. Thank you, Chris. John? I, I want to echo what uh, Mr. Cassie just said. Um, the Memorial Day celebration at the, at the cemetery was really very moving this year. And one of the reasons it was so moving was because of the speaker, um, Mark Granato. Huh. And I just want to say that was probably one of the most exceptional speeches I've ever heard given. And if that is not written up somewhere on our web page, it should be because that he had people in the audience crying over it. It was that moving. It was just wonderful. Uh, I also want to say that um, we need to respond to the hockey issue, I think, in a more public fashion than has been done so far. My email ticker went past 60 emails from different parents over that issue, past players, present players, past parents of players, present parents of players, some for, some against, but that's an issue that was raised to us in such a public fashion by, I don't know, we have a dozen people here at our last board meeting taken to the podium to talk about it. We need to be able to respond to them and say, this is what happened, this is what we did about it, and this is why. And I don't think we have done that yet, and I think that is something that we need to, to do, and we need to do it relatively quickly. So I would ask that we get on that. Kevin? Uh, thank you, and uh, thank you to everyone that came out tonight. It was actually, you know, we always say when it, this is an empty room, that means we're doing a good job. So when there's people here, I mean, the word got out. Um, but regarding, our, you know, our budget scenario, in order for, and I, I may sound like a broken record, but, you know, it's important for everyone to realize that before this board spends an extra dollar year over year, we have to increase our budget by about a little over 3%. And that's just, you know, contract obligations, state mandates. I mean, our WFT increase this year was $800,000 year over year. So, and since I've been on the board, um, we've had increases of 0.4%, 0.7%, 2.4, and now we're about, about one and a half for this year. So that's four years where we've had to cut services, lose people through attrition, not hire again. So, you know, at some point, we have to start looking at, you know, people and programs that we all find near and dear to our heart. And that are, these are horrible decisions we have to make. But, you know, what, when we've been hollowed out for so long, eventually it, it bubbles up. And that's kind of where we are. This administration, this board has done as much as we can to, to patchwork things here and there and be frugal with a dollar and spread ourselves. But that's just our, our budget reality and that's just where we are um, as a board and as a town right now. And I just want to just hammer that message home about that's, you know, that's the, the reality that we see it from here. But thank you again for everyone to, for contributing. Thanks, Kevin. Anyone else? All right, well, usually at this time I get to talk about the committees we go to that really um, contribute to our school system. But tonight I want to make a comment about the hockey, just a quick comment. Um, they did communicate a lot with us both here in the podium and by email, and I emailed back to all of them. Um, and I think that's what we as a board want to do, is to make sure our communication is open. Also, we did sit down and did our investigation with the three board members, the athletic director, um, the high school principal, and the superintendent of schools. And we asked all the questions, and we got the answers. Um, we also had a lawyer involved, and that's why many of the things cannot be said because it becomes a legal personnel matter. Um, but we tried to be as transparent as possible. We, um, I know I got a couple phone calls where I was told I had no courage and even I wasn't even being honest at one point. None of it is true. Um, the board worked very hard to try to come to some kind of understanding of what was going on and moving forward, we have um, objectives in place 
for the coach that he will have to obtain. There's nothing that he can do that um, will be outside the scope of these objectives. I hope that I said that in all the right ways for you guys. The other closing comments I have, and these are very serious. Um, I want to make them uh, for the board as it relates to the town council, and they're very disappointing, and I think enormous, $1.4 million slash of our proposed school budget. First, I must respond to the statement regarding the transparency of our budget process made by the deputy mayor preceding this cut. The deputy mayor claimed that for the last three years, he and Councilman Hurley request for expansion of the Board of Ed budget details had been ignored by the board and the administration. This is absolutely not true, and in response, let me um, direct you with the facts. For the last three years, the board has provided the expanded budget detail to the town council as it has requested. You almost wonder, is it possible that our documentation has been ignored? I hope not. Besides the new budget detail, we include the current year forecasts along with the prior year, prior year actuals. By providing this information, the Board of Ed hoped that it would help the town's elected officials to determine how the school budget is increasing and what is being added or deleted. The board, through the superintendent and our business manager, will continue to provide this information in future budget years, whether requested by the council or not. And not to belabor this point, but I will provide the exact dates the requested information was sent for the past three years. For the 2017-18 budget detail, it was emailed to Councilman Hurley on March 21st, 2017. The uh, 2018-19 budget detail was emailed to Councilman Hurley on March 21st, 2018. The 2019-20 budget detail was provided in our budget binder for all council and board members on March 12th, 2019. And all this information was subsequently updated and emailed to the mayor on April 30th, 2019. The deputy mayor ordered the town clerk to read his statement about how we did not cooperate into the public record. So Ellen, I'm gonna ask you if you would please make sure that our response is also added to the public record. Um, and second, as I said earlier, I found this council's $1.4 million cut to the budget, school's budget, enormous and disappointing. I'm not going to comment further on this board's disappointment, but only want to assure our students and teachers and their parents of our commitment to move forward even with our dramatic reduced budget. Using our leader leader model, we are getting input for reductions from the board, administration, and teachers in order to limit the damage that such a dramatic cut could inflict on our system if we allow it, and we won't. And a shout out to parents. As we've heard a couple times this evening, Going forward, I hope you understand that you are so important and such an influential voice that must be heard during the budget process for our school system. So thank you. And I understand Eden is not with us tonight, but John, you're going to tell us what's going on at the high school. You got it. Eden's channeling me now. All right, uh, she had something to take care of tonight. Uh, Eden has been a very busy young lady at the Weathersfield High School and serves as our uh, Board of Education liaison. Uh, she mentioned to me that tonight, as we're here, the Advanced Placement Studio of Art exhibit took place from five to seven in the gallery at the high school. It was uh, excellent. I went, Elaine went, it was excellent. Um, and that, uh, June 6th, the uh, Weathersfield High School with uh, John Sands, history teacher, and along with the Town Veterans Committee is putting together a program uh, on uh, honoring D-Day at June 6th. Also, the Senior Ball is June 8th, and um, 13 days to graduation for her. John, did you tell him the time for that D-Day ceremony? Um, I do not have the time. I think it's 9 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Positive. 
nine in the morning and she's enjoying mm -hmm. her job as the uh, Board of Ed rep. She indicated she did not know of anyone that would be replacing her at this point, but she'll be here on June 11th. Okay, there are four candidates. I guess now the voting starts, right, Mr. Moore? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, John. Yeah, just uh, the D-Day uh, uh, event is Thursday, June 6th from 9.25 a.m. to 11.30, uh, located at Catone Field. Okay. Anyone else? Okay, can I have a motion to adjourn this meeting? So um, moved. A second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you all for coming tonight, for commenting. Thank you and good night. You did it.